Chapter One Sam was brushing her hair when the girl in the mirror put down the hairbrush, smiled, and said, We don't love you any more. Sam fell backwards off of her stool and peeked up over the edge of the table at her own reflection. You've been a disappointment to us, Sam. We always thought you were the one. Her reflection stared back at her, as if waiting for her to reply. The woman looking across the divide certainly resembled her, yet the lines of her face told a far older story. We? Sam's voice trembled. Who's we? Sam reached out slowly to touch the mirror. That's not how it works, dear, the reflection replied. You're just a pale reflection of us, Sam, the girl in the mirror said with a sad look in her eyes. I don't understand, said Sam. She tried to tear her gaze away and effort to push away the reflection's words, but her eyes were drawn back to it. We know, said the reflection, looking sad. We've always been here for you. You don't remember, do you? Sam picked up her hairbrush and made as if to hurl it at the reflection. But then a funny thing happened. The lights of her dressing room began to dim. That was when she noticed the shadows creeping toward her reflection. The room on the other side of the mirror was fading, the mirror going gradually black. Sam was transfixed. How could this be happening? She thought. It's happening, the girl's voice said, because it has to happen. And then, as the room faded, so did she. First her body disappeared, and then her very thoughts. She tried to hold on. Sam began to tremble and sweat. The reflection in the mirror said, Sam, don't fight this. You will only lose. It's our turn. You promised. Well, what's fun about being a narrator is partly it's just you and the director and the engineer, and uh, you get to create everything together, um, working with your director, and uh, it's it's enormously fun. I'm, I'm sure I get voices wrong all the time, but it's, it's great to sort of um, be your own boss. Um, also, it, you don't have to be terribly glamorous to be an audio narrator. Um, you don't even need to bathe if you don't want to, and I find that comforting always. Um, and uh, it's just uh, incredibly satisfying, but it's very hard work, and you can't let your attention waver for even a second. Well, I drink tea constantly when I'm in the booth, and um, I also prepare my text beforehand. In fact, I'll show a page, see if I have one with a lot of lines on it. I mark all the characters in different colors, which takes me a long time when I'm doing a long manuscript. In fact, I don't have a great deal of social life when that's going on, but I find it makes things go much faster and I can attack the different voices more confidently if I know who's speaking coming up. Um, yeah, a lot of emergency, a lot of tea, and then, uh, you know, cookie breaks. Well, I prepared for the Twitter audiobook first by reading it through several times, and then immediately I signed on and began to tweet myself, because I felt it would be wrong to read the Twitter audiobook without tweeting about it. Also, I did a lot of research. I downloaded a lot of magpie calls from the internet, because there's a talking magpie in this book, and I wanted to be authentic as I could. Um, and then I wrote a tune for the songs that appear in the book. And um, I generally started listening to a lot of audios. I mean, I've always been listening to Neil Gaiman this year. In fact, I've listened to three others, and I immediately listened to Odd and the Frost Giants, and uh, also to Alice in Wonderland, which provided a lot of inspiration. There are so many incredible echoes from uh, other books in this manuscript. Well, I was definitely nervous starting out, but they showed me a wonderful time here recording the book, and I really want to thank Neil Gaiman for writing that wonderful first line. It was an honor to speak his words, and I want to thank Dan Hypes and BBC Audiobooks America, and of course, and very importantly, the Twitterverse, without whom this book would be a mere sentence.